very much, Hubert. Uh, um, unfortunately, Dr. Ibrahim Asalmayaki, the CEO of the Nepal Agency, couldn't travel. Uh, he's uh, actually suffering from a huge uh, back pain, so the doctor had to uh, caution him not to travel yesterday. So uh, I'm speaking on his behalf and I'm presenting his uh, speech. Uh, Her Excellency Dr. Sahar Nasser, Minister of the International Cooperation uh, Ministry of the Arab Republic of Egypt. Um, Mrs. Uh, Zinzi Musamira Rampwe. Um, uh, Rampwe. Rampwe. I should know that Zinzi, because we talked a lot. He head of uh, the Public Sector Affairs uh, Backless Bank. Uh, esteemed members of the CBN Council and CBN members, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me first begin uh, by thanking Dr. Akimumi Adesina uh, for hosting, the, the President of the African Development Bank, for hosting us today here at uh, the ADP Annual Meetings. I welcome you all to the second Continental Business Network meeting. Uh, the CBN was launched in June 2015 on the emergence of the World Economic Forum in Cape Town, South Africa. As an African Union, heads of state and government response to facilitate advice and leadership in essential continent-wide infrastructure projects. We are holding the second meeting as part of the African Development Bank annual meetings. The CBN serves as the continental platform between private and public sector to promote implementation of the Program for Infrastructure Development in Africa, PIA. It aims to engage and advance private sector priorities and requirements to invest in regional and cross-border projects. In addition, it acts as the exclusive infrastructure investment advisory platform, engaging and interfacing with high-level African policy makers and captains of industry on a range of strategic issues such as procurement, sector policy, investment risk rating, structuring and overall promotion of projects. The focus of this second CBN meeting is on the critical role that the private and public sectors need to play in the risking of PIDA projects. Since the launch of the CBN, uh, 21 council members spanning from private sector personalities, prominent patrons of the NEPAD agenda, representatives of both the development finance institutions and international development agencies were nominated to the members of the CBN Council. The Council held, held its inaugural meeting on the 16th of October in New York as part of the United Nations Africa Week events. The CBN Council deliberated and adopted a 12-month work plan with clear results. Overall, the meeting noted that the government, governance structures as highlighted in the CBN framework, needs to be implemented, especially the strengthening of the Secretariat of the CBN at the NEPAD Agency. I am glad to report that since the first June 1st and October 16 meetings respectively, the CBN has achieved set milestones as guided by its 2016 work plan. Highlights of the work undertaken will be presented in this meeting. For the goal, and of significant importance, the CBN Council noted the need to work towards assisting African governments to orient civil servants in business practices. Therefore, a dialogue with public sector entities on project by project basis in terms of fast tracking government processes in supporting private sector participation will be an essential role of the CBN. This second CBN meeting is in line with the aspirations of the CBN Council meeting outcomes of 16 October 2016 in New York. The CBN Council has also stressed the utilization of sovereign wealth funds to recycle financing of, project, of PIDA projects. Hence, the Council called for a strategy to be in place for big money to be attracted through sovereign wealth funds and pension funds which will contribute to de-risking PIDA projects. Therefore, the reason we are gathered here today this afternoon is to fulfill the request of the Council on the need for the CBN to discuss issues of de-risking of the PIDA projects in order to attract private sector funding. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, public investment continues to account for the bulk of spending on infrastructure. In fact, it is estimated that 65% of infrastructure projects in Africa are funded through public funds. However, given Africa's aspirations to sustain economic growth on the continent, 
in the constrained government budgets, it is clear that more innovative ways of financing are needed, and there is need to leverage and enhance private sector participation. There are several ongoing initiatives, uh, such as the PDA service delivery mechanism, uh, known as the STM, the Network Infrastructure Project Preparation Facility, and the Project Preparation Facilities Network, which are all established to provide support for early and mid-stage project preparation. Africa 50, established by the African Development Bank to accelerate infrastructure delivery by mobilizing private financing and to complement funding from other multilateral institutions who contribute significantly in the packaging of the PIDA projects for implementation. These facilities are extremely important, but the issue of risk continues to pose an obstacle for private investments in PIDA. The question that remains to be answered is the, is the issue of risk a reality or a perception? And as we all know, perceptions do matter. Building on the achievements of the mentioned facilities, this second meeting will allow for in-depth discussion <coughs> on what can be done to further promote private participation in PIDA and help craft recommendations for policy intervention <coughs> to address constraints that will identify as perceived high risk to private sector investments in transboundary projects. The need to strike the right balance between social and commercial considerations and the lack of suitably structured investment vehicles and risk return profiles will also be discussed today. I would like to stress that the CBN is growing and becoming a relevant uh, platform for open and frank interactions between business and government at the highest level on how best to move the PIDA projects to financial close. I would like to also highlight very interesting and encouraging data from project finance bank loans. Moody's Investors Services has reported that the average default rate on project finance bank loans is lower in Africa, 2.2%, whilst in North and Latin America, 9.9% and 14.8% respectively, and Southeast Asia, 10%. I am sure we can change the trend on the continent from changing the perception of risk as it relates to investing in transboundary projects which require substantial but patient investment capital. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank all of you esteemed guests for taking precious time out of your very, very busy schedules to join this meeting. The presence of high-level representatives from key private partners and public institutions itself demonstrates the high level of commitment to accelerate PDA implementation. I sincerely hope that our deliberations today's meeting will be a great occasion to exchange insights and ideas on the next steps to expedite PDA implementation. I thank you all. This was the message of Dr. Ibrahim Samayaki, Chief Executive of the NFAD Agency. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shemek, and we wish uh, Dr. Mayaki a speedy uh, recovery. Um, and thank you for really setting the scene. Of course, NEPAD's leadership, not only on regional projects, but as the secretariat for the CBN, uh, is greatly uh, valued. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.